though it feels like it. Uh, <laughs> so slight change there. Uh, also, we've got a few things to pencil in. Uh, we're going to consider a motion concerning the Woodview Commons and a motion concerning the millage renewal. So we'll be discussing those and you should have received uh, preliminary draft comments of those. Uh, we'll also uh, honor a request from Jacqueline that we consider changing our eventual meeting date from second Thursday to third Thursday when we talk about uh, ongoing meeting arrangements. Excuse me, Will. It, it's the reverse. We're currently third Thursday, and I'm suggesting second, second. Thursday. Okay. okay. Um, so may we, if, if there are no other changes to the agenda, may we have a motion to approve? I'll make such a motion uh, with revisions as you've outlined, Will. Thank you, Hob. Second? Second. Uh, Marty, second. Thank you. Okay. okay. Hob? Yes. Jacqueline? Yes. Marty? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Tim? Yes. Will? Yes. And Wiseman is yes. All right. Uh, next matter is approval of, a, of the minutes. People have a chance to look at them. I, I thought you did a good job, Liz. Uh, concise and to the point. Thank you. You're Any changes? No, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt them as written. Okay. Uh, second. Second. Sure. And second yes, from Marty. Her. Okay. Hob. Yes. Jacqueline. Yes. Marty. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Tim. Yes. Will. Yes. I am yes as well. All right. Very good. Uh, next item on the agenda is a uh, welcome and public comment. So particularly welcome to you, David. Uh, and would you like to say a few words? Uh, yes. Well, well, thank you very much for the opportunity. I did want to uh, stop in. I'm not sure I'll be able to attend every meeting that uh, all the boards and commissions have uh, for the township. But uh, if there's something that you specifically need from me, please uh, just send it along. and I'll do my best to uh, to attend the sessions that you need me at. Uh, and also provide any information that we can. Um, so I just wanted to uh, uh, say hello to everyone, uh, introduce myself, and uh, I've been here uh, uh, about two weeks now, uh, so get, still getting settled in, and uh, certainly happy to uh, uh, work with uh, all of our boards and commissions. So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to be here and for the chance to, uh, to uh, say hello. Oh, great to have you, and of course, you're always welcome. Thank you. Uh, I see two hands raised from Rob and Pam. Rob, you want to say something? Uh, you're, there you go. Pam had her hand up first. Ladies first. All right, Pam. Uh, thank, thank you, Rob. Um, uh, two things. Uh, one, I apologize that the newsletter did not get to you guys. Um, it looks like there was a bounce back as spam. And I talked to Christy and she said that um, she's also experienced some spamming that doesn't make sense to her. And um, I have not tried it again. It's been a busy week, um, but I will get this week's newsletter out to all of you. Um, also, I want to just give you a heads up that I will be attending these meetings in January via Zoom and the hybrid method. So when you guys go back um, to in-person meeting, um, I, I have a hearing issue and I just want to say I will be via Zoom. Um, to attend all the meetings. And congratulations on uh, uh, Barry Lonick. His presentation at the bot meeting on Tuesday was awesome. And uh, just you guys are great. Really appreciate what all you're doing. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Pam. And Pam, as usual, since we're twinsies, she stole my thunder. Uh, I was going to say thank you, Barry, for your double presentation uh, at Tuesday's meeting. And thank you to this committee. You guys have had one heck of a year. It has been hugely successful. And I just wanted to thank all of you for the great efforts and well done. Thank you all. 
Uh, thank you, Rob. And uh, yeah, I think everybody on the committee deserves thanks and particularly Barry, whose uh, work uh, every month is uh, um, a wonder and uh, appreciated by all. Uh, so thank you for those comments, Rob. Uh, any other comments? Uh, let's see. We have a Joe Patterson there. Joe, did you have anything? Or is that perhaps the recording? All right. That's me too. Yep, That's I was able to get okay. things fixed. Okay. Uh, all right. Good. Well, thank you uh, all. Let's go to reports of other commissions in the board. Uh, start with planning. Jacqueline, you have something? Sure. So for planning in November, the planning commission finalized the master plan. Um, it will, I think the final, final touches were being put in place for it to be ready to be posted on the website and it will be there shortly if it is not already there. Um, within planning, the sustainability task force has been hard at work. Uh, and at, at the January 6th, sustainability task force meeting at seven o'clock. That's a Thursday at seven. That meeting will feature none other than Barry Lonick talking about um, natural ecosystems and, and land preservation and another speaker on local food systems. Barry, you look surprised. That is on your schedule, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. I was told that that was official, but. Um. <laughs> Jacqueline, that's January 7th? January 6th at 7. Oh, oh gotcha. Okay, thank you. Very approved it. Great. All <laughs> of the presentations from the task force, including there have been previous presentations on how to do a great greenhouse gas emissions inventory and from the water resources division, thinking about um, rain and stormwater needs in the past and, and what might be coming ahead. All those presentations will be made available. They're all open to the public and they will be made available on the website as soon as we get that process, some kinks worked out in that process. Um, and there's also a link to all the task force materials, including a summary of climate and sustainability plans by nearby neighbors. Yeah, good, that's true. Sure. And let me, uh, let me add some quickly. The Northfield Township is embarking on their own um, uh, climate action plan, evidently, where they've, they've uh, put out some requests for proposals and, and uh, there's some discussion going on with the county about how to include possibly all of the townships by addendum into the county climate action plan. So I don't know if that'll take uh, take any traction, gain any traction or not, but I like the idea. There's no no sense in all of the townships going going out and spending money on their own climate action plans if 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 they can kind of pony onto the county's climate action plan and use what is available there and make it um, you know a section of it township by township. That's what I'd like to see happen. So that that's uh, that will be something that the township, Sile Township Sustainability Task Force will be discussing at some point. Right. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate that perspective. Yes, we obviously we do not want to reinvent the wheel. Um, we're working very hard to build on uh, efforts by our neighbors and collaborate with them. And there is actually a um, the county is convening a group from various local townships to, to do some formal collaboration on, on thinking about how these emerge. And so we do have SIO representatives on that group that's coalescing. Great, great. Didn't know that. Good to hear. Okay, good. Um, I understand that the uh, Parks and Recreation and Trails and Alternative Pathways had a joint meeting this month. Is that right, Bob? Were you present for that? You're muted, Hub. Hub, Hub. Hub, muted. There you go. Am I muted now? Yes. There you go. Good. Okay. Sorry. Uh, my screen, my every my whole screen went down to just you, Will. So I wasn't <laughs> sure what to do. Um, 
Yes, we had a, uh, so the TAP, which is the Transportation Alternatives Planning Group, which is our Pathways Group, and the PRAB, which is our Parks Advisory Board, uh, had a joint meeting on the 7th of December. And uh, the highlight of the meeting, at least for this group, would be the fact that uh, Chris Nordstrom gave a, who's our Carlisle Wartman consultant for parks, uh, gave a, a, a pretty, I, I would say, a pretty detailed uh, uh, presentation on our next open space master plan. Um, some of you will recall, um, at least I do, that we went through this process in 2017 and adopted a plan that was good until uh, next year, 2022, um, with a lot of public input. And uh, so we were at that point um, that we that we need to renew that plan or redo it. Um, it is a five-year plan. So this plan will run from 2023 to 2027. And one of the, the key things uh, to keep in mind about this master plan, different from our land use master plan, is this one um, is uh, required, actually, for getting some of the um, preserves and pathways grants uh, that we've applied for in the past and, and actually uh, gotten one, a $300,000 grant uh, towards the uh, Zebro pathway. Um, the three uh, the three grants, which you don't need to memorize, are the Michigan Recreation Passport Grant, which this year I, I think is granting in 2022 something like $7 million worth of funds to different uh, agencies. They're doing um, parks development. The Michigan Trust um, uh, Natural Resources Trust Fund, which I just looked up this year, they're uh, ready to um, distribute something like $40 million. Uh, most of those to local governments, counties, and townships. And then now that the uh, federal land and water conservation funds are are back in action uh, this year, uh, Michigan's getting about $7 million worth of funding. So uh, again, the, the PROS plan, which is our parks, recreation, and open space plan, runs out uh, this coming year, 2022. And the main thing I think to emphasize uh, for folks here is that we will be doing uh, seeking a lot of public input, which we've done in the past. Uh, rather than one open house, we hope to have two or three, um, maybe at Township Hall. We'll, we'll probably again do an online survey. Uh, 2017, that attracted 160 um, online comments. Our goal is gonna be more like two or three or 400 um, if we can get our act together. And I think the final thing to say is that our timeline is to have the first draft of our open space and recreation and parks and preserves pathways all thrown into one, um, done and to the board of, uh, and, and to the public rather, and then eventually to the board of trustees by November 1st of the coming year, 2022. There's a 30 day review period that's required by the state and our deadline for submission of this plan to be back in the back in the action in terms of qualify qualifying for grants would be February 1st, 2023. So at that point, if everyone's done their job and the and people have come out to these different input sessions and filled out different visitor surveys for our parks, pathways and preserves, we should be in pretty good shape. But that's uh, going to be a lot of work for the parks, recreation and uh, folks and also the um, the TAP folks, the Transportation Alternatives Planning TAP folks. Uh, thank you, Hob. Any questions for Hob? There's a lot going on. Yeah, Hob, is yeah. there any interest in, in this effort uh, that you're talking about and the renewed millage that we're going to be looking for for uh, land preservation. Is there any? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. So the millage, of course, will be funding land acquisition. Uh, one of those funds, Tim, uh, which is the Michigan Natural Resources uh, Trust Fund, also will um, can be used to purchase um, 
preserves and, and parks as well. So clearly there's overlap here. Um, the mill, we're not the passing or not passing a millage to renew our land preservation uh, fund program is, is not um, necessary in order to complete this plan, however. Right. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay. Any other questions for Hot or any of uh, other presenters here? All right. Uh, let's uh, find out what happened at the Board of Trustees meeting for those of us who weren't closely in attendance. Um, Thank you. So the board approved the purchase of the Loveland 20 acres. <laughs> Um, and approved the purchase of the 9.5 acre rents property to be used for the fire station and uh, water utilities development. I'm continuing to work with Township Attorney Jim Fink to get a deed restriction on that property after the purchase has happened so that if that land is not used or if any portion, whatever portion is not used for the fire and utilities would be placed back under a conservation easement. Um, Barry did a wonderful introduction of the buy, protect, sell policy. Um, this was just for discussion only, and there did seem to be support from the board. Um, as you know, since he made an appearance, um, the, we have welcomed a new administrator on board for the township, and he will be considering staffing and workflow, um, which, uh, which uh, is why I'm thinking about recommending this change in our uh, which week we meet um, of the month, just so that we have a better workflow. Okay. Um, a final thing that was not discussed at the Board of Trustees on Tuesday, but just came out Wednesday, yesterday, is that SIO has been doing some additional uh, testing of drinking water wells um, to assess contamination by the Gelman dioxane plume. And we have now found several positive results. They're still well below levels of um, the state levels considered allowable for drinking water, but still positive results considerably farther north of where um, the dioxane plume had previously been confirmed, including one that well that is almost adjacent to the Knights of Columbus site, which had at one point been considered as a by the Ann Arbor Greenbelt for conservation. And I'm just going to briefly say that for me, this raises uh, questions about whether LPC and Planning Commission should work together to look at land use in the plume area. Um, and I, I think that will be subject for further discussion as we gain more information. Okay. Uh, it, what, just what, why would you uh, think that would be a good idea? Uh, Jacqueline, you just say a little more. So on, um, if properties are developed within the plume area, the pumping of water for either single use wells or for the kinds of community water systems and waste, and then the re-injection into the groundwater by the community wastewater treatment systems that are now being proposed for planned unit developments. Both of those could potentially cause further movement of the plume and potentially lead to contamination of nearby wells, mm -hmm. which raises for me the question of whether some land um, we should look at land uses that would make development or intensive development less likely and or whether those, if they're good preserve lands, might deserve a higher priority so that, again, there wouldn't be the development that would engage a lot of water pumping. That, okay. that, those are the questions I've, that it raises for me that's not yet a, something that either... Um, the board itself or the planning commission has discussed. All right. Um, yes, Barry, uh, tell us what your impressions were of the meeting. <laughs> uh, well, I just wanted to mention that one other thing that uh, came out of the, of the board meeting Tuesday night was the resignation 
of Trustee Jane Vogel, who was a previous <coughs> member of the LPC. Um, so there wasn't much discussion about it that night, but the trustees are going to have to uh, find somebody to serve uh, in that role until I believe it's the, the November election of next year. So a temporary uh, appointment uh, subject to voter approval, either of that person or some other person next year. Um, and, and the only thing I wanted to say was, uh, unfortunately, the link um, to the meeting wasn't working um, at 7 or 7.05 or 7.10. And so I got in my car and drove to the damn meeting instead. Um, and so I appreciate the, uh, the compliments on my presentation there. I was pretty much winging it um, because all the stuff that I wanted to have available to me here in my house was not available. Um, so I'm glad it, it came off well. I felt like I was just, you know, flying by the seat of my pants there. But, um, but I just think if everything went well. Um, there was great reception for all the things that we have been working on and presented to the board. Well, thank you for representing us so effectively as is evidence from their, your compliments here. Um, also, regarding Jane, uh, a number of us have served on this commission with Jane. And I don't know, my personal feeling was she had an enormous energy, which was really dedicated to the kinds of purposes that we're all following now. And I know from um, experience also with interactions with the other committees that she was really very much devoted to the kinds of initiatives that um, are in improving the quality of life here in, in South Township. So I was sorry to see that she had resigned. Um, but let's move on uh, to old business. And a uh, couple of things here are maybe going to get picked up, Barry, in your uh, general open session report. But uh, I made the rents property developments a particular matter because I think we know it's been a long time and there's a lot at stake and I know things are moving. Can you give us an update now on what's happening with the rents estate? You're muted, Barry. Yes, thank you. Um, so uh, Tuesday was a big day. Yesterday was a big day. Um, uh, as uh, was mentioned earlier by Jacqueline, the Board of Trustees approved the uh, uh, signing of the purchase agreement for the nine and a half acres on the north side of the property for $225,000. Um, and uh, so that was then uh, sent to the estate uh, along with the amendments to the two purchase agreements for the existing uh, uh uh, property uh, the existing uh, agreements, which was the the conservation easement and uh, the the after easement feasible purchase of of the property. Um, so we have initial um, uh, purchase agreement for the easement for three million fifty thousand um, dollars. That uh, the that was amended once uh, a couple of months ago to extend the inspection period to December 15th, which was yesterday. Um, this, and then the, the, uh, uh, the purchase, the feasible purchase uh, agreement was for $450,000. Um, and again, that was extended uh, for an inspection period through uh, yesterday. So in the meantime, a lot of stuff happened. Um, and uh, second amendments to both of those purchase agreements were drafted um, and the terms were agreed to. Um, and uh, Mr. Hathaway, our supervisor, signed all three of those uh, documents uh, yesterday. So the two second amendments to the, the current uh, purchase agreements, and then also the, the purchase agreement for the uh, nine and a half acres on the north side. Um, and they were sent to uh, the estate council yesterday afternoon. I had not seen uh, their executed copies of that yet, but that um, is ostensibly in progress. Um, and uh, I sat back and reflected on that um, yesterday afternoon. Um, that was an enormous accomplishment for all of us and for the township. Um, we signed that initial purchase agreement, uh, the initial two, is somewhere in the middle of August, I'm going to say, 24th, 6th in my head, if I remember correctly. Um, so in just four months' time, um, we were able to uh, 
uh, accomplish all of the due diligence on the property, figure out what we're what we got there in terms of the house and the lack of a septic field and uh, the environmental assessment, the survey, um, all that stuff, um, and uh, complete the uh, the fund the partner funding uh, uh, pieces. Uh, so since we last talked, the Ann Arbor City Council approved their share of the of the easement purchase price a couple of weeks ago. And uh, of course, County Parks had done that previously. Um, so we have, uh, including Silo's contribution, um, all, all five partners are now committed for that. The revised easement purchase agreement is for the appraised value, which is $2,995,000. Um, and so we've got a five-way partnership there with, with cash, um, which I've never done before. And I'm not aware of anybody else that's done a five-way cash partnership before. Um, and in the end, Silo's share of that is uh, 509000 and a couple of dollars. It's in my report there, um, which I can bring up if you want me to. Um, 509514 um, is the total that Silo's contributing toward that, which is 17% of nearly $3 million. Um, with the federal program putting in 29%, the state 25%, uh, the green belt and the county program each putting in about 14% and then 17% for SIO. Um, so um, it was with- Can I just say that is a phenomenal leveraging of our funds. Kudos, Barry. Uh, and I, exactly, I know you've worked yeah, so agree. hard on yeah. this, on those state and federal and Amazing. partners. Yeah. Thank we'll you. Get another round of applause, Barry. Yeah, normally, normally I went back and looked at the percentages over the over the last sixteen years, and it's not uh, not uh, uh, it's pretty common to have SIO putting in 40, 50, 60, 70 percent, sometimes one hundred percent. So that's that's really phenomenal. Thank you. Uh, it is phenomenal, I must say. Um, we are fortunate to have uh, some very good local partners and also a very good property. As you may recall from uh, past reports, both uh, the state and federal programs uh, uh, ranked this property as, the, as number one uh, of all the ones that were received um, in the most recent funding round. So um, we're blessed with a good property also. Um, uh, so uh, we've got now until April 30th um, to close those two uh, uh, purchases. Um, we've been, uh, one of the other things that the Board of Trustees, I think, approved, I think it was on the consent agenda, uh, Jacqueline, correct me if I'm, I'm incorrect there, is the the initial agreement between American Farmland Trust and SIO about uh, uh, assigning the, the fee simple purchase agreement to them. Uh, yes, that was approved. I apologize for omitting that. No worries. Um, so we're continuing to work with them. I updated them today, actually, to tell them that uh, all this had been done, and uh, they were uh, very excited to hear that, that things have been moving along. Um, so we've got that in place um, in the short term. Um, one of the other things that I'm about to do today um, is to send the appraisal um, to the federal program for their review, um, which they do every time. Um, and I hope that that will uh, result in a positive um, outcome. Um, sometimes those things need to be tweaked a little bit, um, but the sooner we get it to them, the better off we are. Uh, one thing I uh, did ask the appraiser to do, and if they did, and they actually did do, was more explicitly state how they reached the conclusion on the conservation easement value in the transmittal letter um, at the beginning of the document. It was not clear um, uh, how that was reached, and as you know, I, I poured over that that appraisal for quite a few hours to tease the numbers out of it um, to understand how they got there. I don't want a federal reviewer to have to do that or throw up his hands and say, I can't find this um, and reject it. Um, so hopefully that will be um, covered by the fact that they changed that, uh, that transmittal letter. Uh, as I said, the baseline uh, is done. Um, it was, uh, um, I think it was 86 photos um, to document the property. Um, which is quite a few. Um, it's big, but it's also got, as you know, all those tree lines and, and different angles to shoot from um, to be able to uh, fully document the property, but that's uh, been completed. 
um, all the documents that we need to uh, provide to our local partners um, for review were submitted last week. Um, and it was confirmed that they had everything that they needed. And so that 60 day clock has uh, started uh, for their review. I asked them also to speed it up if they could. Um, it's pretty standard stuff. It's not like there's anything um, out of the ordinary. Um, I did indicate that there was a building envelope uh, on the property, which they like to know, um, and that we are uh, utilizing the affirmative uh, easement language that Ann Arbor Township originally uh, drafted, um, and uh, which requires the arable parts of the land to be put to an agricultural use. But those are the only unusual things about the easement, otherwise it's very straightforward. So I'm hoping that will happen soon, um, the review and the approvals. Uh, because once we hear from them, then we ship it off for state and federal review also. And the federal review, excuse me, um, can also take 60 days. Um, so right now we've got uh, 120 days um, uh, by which to get all those approvals and move to closing by um, April 30th of next year. So I, Mayor, ask I understand that no money has yet been transmitted to the estate. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Uh, and is there still uh, any remaining contention about the period of time during which this whole uh, sale has to be completed? Uh, no, they have agreed um, by, or will have agreed by the time that they uh, execute those, those second amendments to the purchase agreements um, to have the deadline be April 30th of next year. Okay. All right. Well, uh, wonderful job. I know how hard you worked on that, Barry, and it uh, looks like finally uh, we'll have to have a celebration for you. Uh, oh, when we close this, there will be fireworks. Um, <laughs> uh, and we should uh, have a gathering out on the property as well um, and invite all of our funding partners and the family and and others. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that sometime uh, in the near future. Yeah, something around April 30th, maybe. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, I did ask Can I just ask a quick question, yeah. Mary? I, you know, I appreciate the affirmative language about arable land being used for agriculture. And I'm also remembering that our previous member, David Reed, expressed some questions or concerns about what if somebody wanted to do some ecological restoration of prairie land, for instance, on some acres. Is there a way to have a little bit of flexibility for, you know, maybe with a maximum acreage or something like that? I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering how we balance those um, concerns. And maybe it's not this property, maybe this property, because we have all these agricultural grants, it's just that affirmative language. But as we move forward, I'm wondering about flexibility. Uh, that's a great question. And I mean, the, the, the easement's not final at this point. Um, is you know in a, in a still in a draft form, so I can add that kind of language to it. I think that's a great idea, actually. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, Lisa. What Barry and everybody is doing on the buy protect sell is so forward thinking and leading the way with this type of thing. I'm wondering if we might consider a proactive public relations campaign or a press release for when the property closes on April 30th, just to try to show the great work that Sio Township is doing and start get some start to get some positive press as we move closer to the land preservation millage. Yeah, absolutely. I, I For every project that we close, and the one that we did close uh, this year was the, the Syker uh, parcels over there on, on Park Road. Um, I draft up a press release. I send it out to uh, a media list that I've generated. Oh, you do? Oh, perfect. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and we've got some good run on things. And, uh, you know, we, I, mean, we, I, know, I know there was an article on MLive and the, I think there was one in the Sun-Times. Yeah, I and, saved that one. I didn't realize that you sent out the press releases. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and photographs um, that I've taken mm -hmm. of, of the property as well. Um, and, and that's, you know, I mean, for, even though the Sucker property was a great, acquisition um i sent it out and sort of you know uh, let it run its own course and got some great uh, uh pub out of it um for this closing there, there would be more of a, a concerted effort 
uh, mm-hmm. to get even, even more coverage. I know that um, uh, when we bought the April farm, um, I think it was Channel 4 in Detroit that, that somehow picked it up. I don't think I sent it to them. Maybe they NBC. saw it on that line or something. Okay. Um, and, and I was out of town, unfortunately, when uh, this happened, but I believe it was Jack Knowles and Erwin Martin um, and maybe somebody else, um, uh, you know, were filmed by a Channel 4 news crew from Detroit. Um, mm-hmm, that's that great. So we got a little TV poke from that also, um, uh, which was great. But I think that that's also very possible for, for this deal as well to get some really good run out of it. Yeah, Barry, and I think more so than giving us publicity for our millage, it really presents a model for other townships uh, mm-hmm. in the yep. county and anywhere. Uh, I mm-hmm. was particularly uh, struck by the story in M Live and maybe else, elsewhere where a Superior Township voted to spend of their own funds $2 million or more with no partners. And they mentioned they didn't get the green belt on and they didn't get the county on. So we shouldn't uh, in any way imagine that these partnerships are a given. And how, mm-hmm. as, as you pointed out, how much we're saving by maintaining the goodwill of these other agencies. Mm-hmm. And in fact, being a leader, because everybody wants to be a leader, right? I mean, here we are in Ann Arbor. Isn't that part of our... Uh, <laughs> our <shape? laughs> All right. Um, good, uh, Barry, for, for following through on that. And we'll, of course, uh, follow the continuing developments. A couple, Next, of the, a, quick, a couple of the quick things I'll say about this. One is that I asked about the farm lease um, and was told that it's not written, but it's verbal. Um, and so I asked for whatever terms that they have for that. Uh, uh, Pam uh, Martin said uh, at one point that, that uh, the, uh, the operators had not paid them yet for this year. Um, uh, but anyway, that's you know, uh, a circumstance that a, uh, a new owner is going to be um, realizing, whether it's verbal or written. Um, and of course, the, the ground's planted in hay, so it is uh, you know, available for use either by a new owner or a new owner leasing the property out to the current operators. Um, but I wanted to figure out what the terms of those uh, of that arrangement is. And lastly, um, the uh, uh, I just got from uh, the estate uh, December fifteenth, dated yesterday. Uh, the soil evaluation. So they, I believe, uh, and I hadn't had a chance to look at this. I just got it. Um, but I think they had uh, a contractor out to the site um, to dig holes and see if they perk or not. And the, the pre- preliminary word was that there was perk sites within the three acre building envelope. Um, so I hope that's actually the case. Um, that will make things a lot easier for a new buyer um, and obviously a lot less expensive for them. We agreed um, in the, the last little bit of negotiation here for the second amendment um, to split the cost of uh, having a new septic field installed on the property up to $25,000. Um, and so I think that if they do have actually have a perk set on it, then the cost will actually be substantially lower than, than 50,000, such that we wouldn't have to put in another 25. Um, so um, I'll report on that um, at another time, but uh, there's some progress on that as well. Yeah, I think that was a real goodwill gesture to split it. It happened, I got a little note from Pam, she knew about this meeting and she particularly cited that as you know, one example of the good relationship that we have with the estate. So it, when the attorney is involved, it seemed like maybe it wasn't so good. But when it's Pam involved, <laughs> everything's going just fine. So that's uh, that's also to your credit, Barry. Thank you. And, and I just want to also just give a quick shout out to, to Joe Fazio. He has been invaluable to me and to us in getting this this project done. Um, he's been right on top of deadlines and, and uh, communications with the state's attorney. Um, so, uh, really, uh, it, we wouldn't be able to, I mean, it, it, I appreciate all the, the compliments that you've given me. We wouldn't be able to do it without him either, really. Um, so, um, hats off to him as well. Good. Please extend, extend our thanks to him, Barry, since we don't personally see him. I wouldn't. Yeah, we all, by acclaim, we all uh, appreciate him. Can you hear me, Will? Yes, Tim. Hearable. I just want to uh, say quickly that I'm looking forward very much to, to finding 
the right agricultural use to put on that ground, you know, the right family. We're going to, at some point, be getting requests for proposals from uh, very, very thinks quite a few people. And it's a fantastic opportunity for somebody. And I, I just appreciate the vision of this group and uh, the effort that you particularly, Barry, have put into making this happen. It's, it's, uh, I think it's going to have great fruit. Good. Barry, Barry, would it be appropriate to mention the purchase price? Do we think, do we know what the purchase price is going to be? I remember you throwing out a number, but is that a yeah. firm number? So, um, so the, the, the two current the original agreements that we had with the estate totaled three and a half million dollars, um, which is a little bit less than what their appraisal said the property was worth, but they were willing to sell for three and a half million. That's, that's the easement and the after easement fee combined. Um, and so the way that we have <coughs> constructed these amendments and the new purchase agreement is to come to the same number. It's just in three different transactions rather than two. Um, so we have an appraisal for the conservation easement. Um, and so that number is $2,995,000. Um, the appraisal also valued the nine and a half acres that the township's gonna buy for future public services at $225,000. And so those two numbers uh, less, you know, you know, off of three and a half million leaves $280,000 <coughs> left over. Um, so that will be the, the value of the property, plus there's some uh, the septic field costs that we're passing on essentially to the, the next owner. We're not, we're not actually paying for that ourselves, nor is American Farmland Trust, ultimately. They may, they may pay for it in the short term, but that will be reimbursed to them when we find that new buyer. Um, and then one of the things that uh, we've discussed, uh, Jacqueline and I have discussed is, and we wrote this into the policy, um, is the ability to charge up to 10% of the purchase price um, for administrative fees. So that's a possibility, but at any rate, it's, you know, in 300 or, you know, maybe 310 or 320 um, for a hundred acres of, of property. Um, so more or less, you know, 3000 bucks an acre, which is essentially the ag value. It may be a little bit low actually for what the uh, conserved uh, farmland uh, prices are these days. It's 3,500 to maybe even $4,000 an acre. So, you know, getting into a property at 3,000 or 3,200 bucks an acre is a, is a really good deal. And I've already had a couple of inquiries uh, uh, about it. Again, people that have contacted me in the past and just said, hey, I heard something's you know, brewing. And so I just said, uh, keep your eyes out because um, the board of trustees will uh, uh, review the, the buy, protect, sell documents again at the first January meeting. Uh, I assume that they will approve them at that point. Um, and so right now I'm targeting uh, a release of the, or the publication of the RFP uh, for January 15th. And I was thinking about a 60 day window for that. So March 15th, um, Lisa has offered her skills to help me uh, compile all that information and, uh, and evaluate that, which I will gladly take. Um, and then you know, you know, we may find somebody um, in the 45 days between March 15th and April 30th um, that can have all the financing line up such that they can be the buyer um, on or about April 30th. Um, if that's not possible, um, then American Farmland Trust will step in and serve that role and then we will facilitate the transfer to the new owner as soon as possible thereafter. Okay. Thank you for that rundown. That's a lot of details, but uh, uh, good to be reminded. And a much better deal than, I mean, you know, again, the original deal was that the easement was going to be 3 million and 50,000 and the after easement fee value that, that uh, the operators were going to pay was 450. So, right. Exactly. That's what I remember. This is a, uh, Quite a bit lower, twenty five percent lower, and that's thanks to the to the township purchasing the nine and a half acres on the north side, and the right. estate willing to keep that three and a half million dollars as the overall purchase price for the yeah. the property. So, yeah, well done. All right, thank you. Um, 
we can perhaps move on then to the next item on the agenda, which is the Woodview Commons development. And uh, I don't know, has there been any uh, change in the information we have from the developers of this PUD and their receptiveness to some sort of uh, rearrangement of their plan to protect the southern part of the parcel? Do you know Barry or Jacqueline? Has there been anything before the Planning Commission regarding this? The Planning Commission has not seen uh, the next iteration, and I I think there may have been some further meetings with the supervisor, but I'm not aware of any updated information. Barry, did did you have any response when you um, communicated about about that southern part of the pr property? Yes, I relayed that to Doug Lawan after our last meeting, the Township Planner. Um, and uh, asked Doug to relay that to the to the developers, um, which he did, and responded that they, um, uh, you know, were uh, thankful for knowing that um, and would take it into consideration. And then there was a subsequent uh, email from Doug saying that they, you know, had interest in in considering that. And I told them that it was, you know, we'd be uh, willing to perhaps uh, uh, purchase the this whole Southern part of that property, which was the, the piece that had been nominated to the county program many years ago that, and that some of us looked at um, at that time. And I think that was about 40 acres or so, if I remember correctly. We have a pretty big chunk. Yeah, and it's a little over 50. Yeah, it's 50 point something, Barry. That's right. Yeah. All right. So that's, that's the last I heard of it. So where we are now is I think we all, as per our discussion of the last meeting, feel very much in favor of acquiring this property under some circumstances, whether it's outright purchase or some arrangement with the planner to perhaps redistribute the housing on the property. Um, Liz has prepared a motion which uh, potentially we can vote on and present to the Board of Trustees, not insisting that uh, we go ahead and do this, but to make sure we have a marker uh, with the Board of Trustees concerning our strong interest in this action. Um, so um, I think we'll go ahead, we'll ask for Liz to make the motion, we'll ask for a second and then we'll have a discussion and uh, see if we can vote on this to send to the BOT. Let me see if I can, um... Here's the, here's the motion. Um, so I, I, I sent this to you all earlier and you may have had a chance to take a look. Um, and I'll just read it here. This is a motion to recommend that the Board of Trustees explore with the developers of Woodmont, Woodview Commons options for protection of the southernmost 50 acres. Again, I'm not sure of the acreage of the Woodview Commons property, including mature upland woods and open fields at such time as the developers present a revised site plan to the board in 2022. So I am, I would like to discuss and just have any suggestions as far as language or precision, anything like that. So just a matter of procedure here, is there a second to the motion that we consider this? I, I would second. like to make a second or Marty, if Marty okay. wants. All right, so we have a second. All right, so let's let's discuss it and consider whether we've got the right words here to make the most positive impression uh, on the board. Anybody want to start the discussion? Does it sound good as it stands? Liz and I talked a little bit about it and we weren't sure about the word, uh, whether it should be purchase or other options for protection. Um, purchase is, is more definitive, <laughs> but perhaps um, a little bit front running the, the problem. I, I think it might be good to leave the language a little more broad just in case, you know, maybe it's going to end up being a conservation easement. I mean, right. you know, something would be better. A conservation easement would be better than nothing. So the broad language might be better. I just had a question for Barry. I mean, my memory of this site is that there's also a significant wetland on that southern portion. And I would just say that if that is in fact the case, you know, wetlands in general have a lot of interest and because there's a lot higher degree of regulatory protection and also because of the species associated with them. So if there 
our wetlands there, and I'm sorry I didn't see that map that Barry sent out, or I don't have it on hand, but um, I think we should specify also if it's there, um, that wet wetlands in that list of upland woods and open fields. So we okay. should insert, uh, I should now read, including mature upland woods, open okay. fields, and wetlands. Is that correct though, Barry? I, yeah, I think so, right, Barry? Oh yeah, I remember if the wetlands. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're um, actually about uh, the original 50.44 acres, which is what, Barry, you sent out um, for this, the one configuration of the southern end of the property. Um, I would, I'm looking at it right now. I'm going to guess 20%, 25% of the, of that 50 acres is, um, uh, is um, hardwood uh, wetlands, hardwood swamp. Okay. Is the is the acreage okay the way we have it? Fifty acres, or do we need to be more precise? Well, I think fifty acres is fine. I'm, uh, what Barry sent out, uh, uh, if that's the, I mean, Barry, I don't know. You sent it out as Woodview Space South, S O U T H dot PDF. Yeah. So can I also? Yeah, let so me unshare this one because we've read it up. If you want to put that up, I think it would answer Jacqueline, your question, and also okay. Liz. There you go, Barry. Um, if you, are you fine? Yeah, you are. Oh, very good. So that's it was my quick sketch of, of you know, the, the southernmost part of the property that has all of the wetlands um, and the upland woods as well. And then um, the the northern part of this 50 acres is a, another little swale, you know, running from the the southwest to the northeast. It's in, you know yet another branch of Honey Creek, one of the 57 branches. Um, and you know it's it's dry most of the year, but it's going to be uh, you know wet in the spring and after snow melts and so forth. Um, so I would. Uh, encourage that to be included. There's a couple of fields to the south of that, of course, um, and you know those will be fine too. Um, uh, Barry, do you want to do you want to point out there's a uh, most of the wetland I'm thinking of is at the southern end, the wooded wetland, but there's uh, where the proposed road is to connect that most southern field that would fill in a fair amount of wetlands. Um, can you, do you have, can your cursor point out where that area is? Cause that's a nice buttonwood swamp. Mm -hmm. that yes. So, so the, the dark area over here is yes. the, is the, uh, the, uh, Southern swamp, the maple swamp, um, that's you know, like some of the other, mm -hmm. uh, low land woods that are on adjacent properties that we own. Um, the lighter colored wooded areas here and, you know, through here. Um, are upland woods, um, right. and and this part in particular here was under the current approved PUD site plan, uh, slated for being cleared. Yeah, which was really unfortunate. Um, so I'm hoping there's a better chance for that. And then, as I said, there's this swale that goes through the middle of it here. I think this is the button bush swap you were talking about. Yeah, that's exactly where it is. Yeah, and that was going to be cut in half by a, a road. To, yeah. to be able to connect to about 50 to 100 condominiums in the area that you've put in a box area, 50.44 acres. Underneath that is the field in question that yeah, this one, yeah. that road is being put in in order to get to, which of course is uh, you know valuable for wildlife critical ha wildlife habitat to not see that happen. Okay, uh, any further discussion? It is describing this, what we're talking about is the southernmost. Is that is that accurate or do we need to adjust that a little bit? And I guess I would say, Barry, that's a question for you. I mean, I think that covers it. I, 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 this okay. whole parcel, this is a parcel. Okay. And, and that is 60 acres. Okay. So what I've sketched here is, is you know, 50 of the 60. Okay, so if it as is, you're okay with the language of 50 acres at southernmost, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
including right. some of the creek on the top edge this here yeah yeah that's within the 50 acres and that's covered in the in the language to the board of trustees or yeah. so i think that's a great idea that we should say including a tributary to honey yeah. creek mm -hmm. because then we also hit the water quality mm -hmm. storm yeah. buffer you know that whole set of values for that property okay so i'm going to add that in there including a tributary of honey creek or two honey creek i don't know how that I think two two, two honey honey. all right and, I, and uh, Liz, I think maybe a tributary to Honey Creek located um, in the northern portion of the southern portion. So it's not, it's clear that we're not talking about the uh, wetlands in the southern end. This is the, the northern okay. end. Yeah. I think that makes it a little clearer. All right. As amended then, <laughs> as revised, any other thoughts? Good. So perhaps we can vote then on uh, this motion to be sent to the Board of Trustees. Or call the uh, call the vote. Hey, uh, we're voting on the motion as amended. Is that right? Will? Yes. 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 Uh, yes. Jacqueline. Yes. Marty. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Kim. Tim, he's busy at the moment talking. Okay. Jim, if you're yes. there. Yes. Okay, and then Will? Yes. And Wiseman is yes. Thank you. So, yeah, and noted is it was unanimous uh, motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when it's put together for the board. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you for getting it started. Right. Um, all right, uh, moving then on to the matter of the millage renewal understanding that it's not ours as a commission to organize but we do have to inform the board of trustees that it is uh something we would like them to consider for the november ballot and i believe barry has sent us uh a motion to that effect barry are you in a position to put that up on the screen so we can just take a look at it yeah I may just send it to you, Will, but I can I can certainly um, make that available. But it's a very simple motion that we've been talking about for, for quite a long time. Um, and just to, revive, to remind everyone, the current millage, um, well, the original millage was passed in November of 2004. It ran for 10 years. Um, we chose to renew it a couple of years ahead of time in November of 2012. Um, so there wasn't any, there was a little bit of uh, um, overlap, I guess you would say, although there was only one millage levied at a time. So when the first one ran out, the second one, the second 10 years kicked into place. So it officially started in, in 2014. Um, and so there's still um, a couple, there three years left on that millage. Um, but again, uh, uh, we're looking to get ahead of the, the, uh, the pack here um, and uh, get it on the ballot and get it passed November of 22 um, so that there we can just keep right on working as we have been um, and not have to worry about doing that in 24. Um, and, and I don't think we have any concern that, that it wouldn't succeed. Um, but in the case that it didn't succeed, um, if you put it on the ballot sooner, then you've got another chance to, to uh, uh, deal with it uh, going forward. Um, I, mean, I can put this up, but I mean, it's a pretty simple motion that I, I drafted and sent to Will. That is, you know, motion by one person, support by another, to recommend to the Sio Township Board of Trustees that a renewal of the land preservation program millage be placed on the November 2022 ballot. And would it be a straight renewal or a renew and restore? Great question. Um, so that's something that uh, County Parks did last year with their Natural Area Preservation Program millage, um, which had also been in place for 20 years at that point. Um, and that was a substantial amount of funds um, to be 
recouped. So for those of you who don't know this, um, uh, that millage, the county's millage was for a quarter mill initially. Um, in Michigan, we have the, the Headley Amendment um, that uh, limits the amount of increase um, uh, that can be levied. And so over time, um, rather than having it remain at, at uh, 0.25, the millage actually gets reduced. And I don't know what our current millage is here in Sio at this point, but it's, it's less than the original uh, half mill um, that we um, got on the ballot. It might be 0.4921 or something of that sort, um, but it's less than what the original uh, vote was. Um, so that's one option that could be um, recommended to the Board of Trustees is to uh, both uh, renew and restore the original millage amount, and that would generate more funds for us. It still can be called a renewal in doing that, because otherwise we're not changing the ballot language or the purpose of the program or anything of that nature. It's just restoring it um, to the original um, millage amount. I would propose that we go for the restore, and if we don't get that, then at least we can go back to the straight renewal if we lose. Um, right. I like a motion. Uh, so, oh. somebody would like to make that motion? I would like to make a motion that we, that we recommend to the Board of Trustees that we renew and restore the land millage to get that back on the ballot. I'd like to, ballot. I'd like to support that motion, uh, Lisa's motion. Okay. Could uh, you explain to me why, why the, the millage reduces? Oh boy. In, in a short period of time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's got to do with the Headley amendment. Um, uh, the amount of, I think it's the amount of, and if David's still listening, if he, can, if he can correct me on this, then please do. But the amount of millage that you can collect is is uh, uh, limited by the rate of inflation about how much more you can collect. So, you know, the property values in a, in a year might increase by 5%, for example. Um, so theoretically, you would get 5% more uh, uh, property tax revenue, but the Headley Amendment limits that to I think it's the rate of inflation. So let's say it's 2% um, instead. So um, in order to uh, uh, account for that, the, the millage rate levied is reduced from the original approved amount by the voters. Does that help? Not Just really. <laughs> a brief summary. A brief summary from one of the Michigan State websites is that the Headley Re Amendment requires that property tax millage rates be rolled back if the tax base of a local unit increases by more than inflation. There you go. So as our as the taxable value of our homes are going up in SIO, if it's going up beyond inflation. Oh, uh, then then every millage, every tax millage has to be reduced. Mm. Wow. Well, it might be a risk, right? If the economy keeps tanking. <laughs> but Gary, is it possible for you to find out what the current effective millage is or or we are, or david Ralph. i mean I, I don't even know who to ask that to i can ask township hall the assessor um, the treasurer yeah, it it, okay it's easy enough to find it it may be on your tax bills actually um but i'll find it somewhere okay yeah i would um i um so uh yeah will do we currently have a motion we do having this session the board of trustees to for both or to have a renewal that would include the, a restore of the original i believe we have that motion and we're now in discussion here okay. so great um were you satisfied marty with uh the explanation here not totally no <laughs> but do you feel you can vote for or against oh, this yes i can have? sure Okay, is there any other discussion? Uh, oh, yes, so, Barry, excuse me. Barry, can you send me the language that is just so I'm accurate on 
how you put that? Yes, and then of course Lisa's uh, amended that. Since, yeah, no, uh, I've got Lisa's amendment. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was in okay. it too. So even with the uh, Headley rollback, I think that we would be collecting about the same amount of money, wouldn't we? If for the land preservation fund, um, Woodbury, it, it would because the property values have gone up and there's more property value in the township and. Uh, even though the Headley mm. rolls back a little bit. Anyway, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So even though the percentage is down, the funds are up, so. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would guess the amount coming in to the fund would be about the same, maybe even a little more. It, so if, if you do the uh, restore, it is more money. I'm not sure how much. I can tell you for the county, it was uh, significant. Um, I think the last year of the second 10 year millage, the total revenue was something like 3.6 or $7 million. And uh, the first year of the, the renewal and restore, um, which will be levied on this, this winter tax bill, the estimated uh, revenue from that first levy of the of the new millage with the restore in place was four point six million dollars. It was like a six or eight hundred thousand dollar difference because of the restoration of the millage. That's correct, and that's county wide, of course. So it's, it's not going to be quite as dramatic in, in Sio, um, but nevertheless, it will result in more funds coming in. All right, we need to move along here. If there's any other quick questions, uh, at the now or we'll vote. <coughs> no more questions. So Liz, would you again call the vote, please? Bob? Yes. Jacqueline? Yes. Marty? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Tim? Yes. Will? Yes. And I am yes. Good, thank you. Let me just say quickly that uh, I just got financials for uh, fiscal year uh, 2021, which ended on March 30th. And that plug goes into my table of, of uh, uh, revenue generated um, over time. So the most recent number I have ready access to here is through March 31 of 2020. And that was that the millage generated $620,000 more or less. Um, and it's gone from, you know, 532, it increased a bunch of years. And then with that little recession that some of you may remember, um, and that dropped values down a bit. And then it's been steadily increasing since then. Uh, so it was 620, you know, more than a year ago. So it's, you know, probably, it only jumped by three or $4,000 um, in that time. Okay. So, you know, it's probably about 630 um, in the most recent one. Um, but without the Headley rollback, um, you know, chances are that would be, you know, maybe 700,000. All right. Good. The, thing I admit, the other thing I'll mention real quick, um, Will, is that the um, original millage passed with 75% in 2004, and the renewal passed in 2012 with 70% support. So um, very strong showing from the citizens of SIO. And of course, we continue to do amazing things with their dollars and um, I, you know, I have every confidence that people will support it again. Yeah, and oh, uh, I will. I will give a quick shortcut here. Um, in a in a levy rate, uh, Sio Township um, document, it shows preservation at zero point four eight three three. There you go. Zero point four eight three three. Which is what? Uh, what is it's that? the millage rate that. When you get your tax bill, that's what it is used to show what contribution you're making to preserving farms and yeah, yeah. in woods and um, so. In, also, in, seven, in 17 years, it's gone from 0 0.5 to 0 0.433. 0 0.48. 0 0.4833, correct. From 0 0.5. 0 0.4. Yeah. Four eight three three. It's gone down then, huh, Barry? 
contracts because of the heavy rollback. So even though the, the, the revenues have increased generally yeah. over time, other yeah. than the recession, um, and also another factor that came into play uh, in terms of revenues generated was that for a long time, Dexter was a village and part of Sio Township. And therefore they paid into the, that tax. Yeah. And Dexter became a city and no longer part of the township. The revenue generated from the millage decreased because that land base was no longer part of it. Yeah. All right. Okay. If, we can, if we can move on then. Um, yeah. let, me, let me just say, Will. Yes. That that the Sio Sustainability Task Force, I think, is willing in uh, some way or form to get behind this, um, you know, uh, uh, advertising the millage at the time and at the time is right and getting, you know, some people out there putting signs up and so on. I think we can find some <coughs> help there. Good. Good. Okay. Glad to hear that, Tim. Look forward to your help. Uh, welcome, Alec, uh, to our little meeting here. Um, we're now down to new business, uh, item Roman numeral eight, uh, constraints of the Open Meetings Act and possible revision of our January, February meeting arrangements. Um, story here, and <clears throat> to refresh your memory, is uh, we are, if we are to meet as a group, uh, and officially pass any business or form a quorum, Beginning in January, we will have to meet in the township hall together, face to face, masks deployed perhaps, but probably physically spaced. I had a long conversation with uh, Clerk Flintoff about this um, and indicated that most or all of us were not in favor of having uh, face to face meetings, especially with members of the public whom we had no evidence uh, were vaccinated or wearing masks and we were in no position to obligate people to that. And she, uh, as someone pointed out to me, is very much a person by the rules and left little hope that this legislature, which determines that this is the way public meetings are to be conducted after the first of the year, would change the regulations, which um, uh, seems a little bit strange since the direction these days seems to be people postponing getting together, uh, an increase in infections, and we don't have to get into the epidemiology of the situation. But I'm presuming that most of you would rather not meet in person. And just raise of hands is how many people would rather not meet in person on January and February? Okay, well, well, I can't. I will. I will be out of town. So if if I attend, it will need to be remote if that is possible. Well, the way it works is uh, we need a quorum physically present mm -hmm. in the town hall or where the, mm -hmm. where the public meeting is held. Uh, members can participate in the meeting, but not vote on oh. any motions. Um, they can participate in discussion. It's my understanding. Now, I don't know if uh, Alec or Jacqueline want to clarify the circumstances they view it from within the Township Board of Trustees. Um, but the suggestion, uh, I'll give you a chance to explain if you like, suggestion is we can postpone our meetings for January and February, simply not meet and get our business done here today or another meeting in December or postpone it until we do feel comfortable. Now, there's no obligation that we have to um, meet by standards of the legislature or the Open Meetings Act uh, in any particular time or with any particular regularity. But if we do, it has to be a hybrid meeting, hybrid for the public and face-to-face -face for us. Um, and I understand many of the other commissions are similarly concerned about this in light of the uncertainty of of COVID. So we're not alone. We're not facing this uniquely. And I believe Clark Flintoff has suggested this solution to other commissions. So I'll leave it for your discussion here. Are there any, are there any thoughts people have about this? So what happens in March that would, uh, would uh, like nothing happens in March. Nothing so that I was, I was actually uh, part of the broadband task force this morning 
and had uh, Commissioner Maciejewski and Commissioner Beeman from the Washtenaw County Commissioners. Um, they're fully aware of this. Washtenaw County had a long discussion last evening regarding the, you know, the, the request of the public to be able to meet virtually, uh, same for the broadband uh, task force. Um, unfortunately, it is a mechanism of the OMA. There is no, unless if you are a body that takes action, you must follow the OMA. So as it stands now, and it was, there was a bill in the House, I believe, but it was not taken up uh, and they're in recess now. So there's nothing that's going to happen in the near future until they come back into session next year. You have that opportunity that they may take a look at it, but until that point in time, we are required, and um, you are correct. I've, I've talked to um, our Jim Fink, our, our attorney. I've talked to uh, Clerk Flintoff. Um, we have to have a quorum public in person according to OMA requirements. Um, our only uh, means of getting around that per se is, is what Will said, which is to not meet. But if we do meet, that is the requirement. There are no alternatives to that. And unfortunately, if you're not present in person, you don't have voting capacity. I am more, I am happy to meet in person as one of those people to, to fulfill an in-person quorum. I just can't do so in January, unfortunately. Sure. Mary, I just wonder if we could ask you about your sense of the workflow. Do you think, Jane, we have, I mean, right now, Renz is perking along, the other deals in progress are perking along. We'll clearly have the RFP, but that won't be till March. What is your sense of the urgency of the work that's coming up in January and February? I think we probably skate at least January and maybe February also. You say that again. It was hard to hard to hear you, Barry. The, the, you know, we can. We don't need. You know, the the things that we've been working on so diligently this last year have all pretty much come to a head at this point, such that I don't see a whole lot. To, I mean, there's updates, of course, to do, but in terms of action items, I don't see anything uh, needing attention uh, in January and maybe not in February as well. Yeah. Why don't we? And we was why don't we say we're not going to meet in January and, and, uh, and uh, you know, see if we need to meet in February, beginning of February, tally the, tally the reasons. And just yes, say well, I I think can... Go ahead. I would table January. I would suggest that the legislature is going to be continuing to take this up as well. The, Washington County Board of Commissioners. And I would also suggest we always have the opportunity to call a special meeting if required. And now if we call a special meeting, we'll know the rules that are required uh, to follow the OMA. So I think we'd have both options available in the event that we had to conduct immediate business. All right, sounds like a good plan, uh, Tim. Uh, so the suggestion is that we not meet uh, in January, we gather information regarding any changes to the Open Meetings Act and potentially meet in February. And while we're talking about meeting whenever we begin again, we wanted to discuss Jacqueline's suggestion that we move our meeting from the third Thursday to the second Thursday of the month. Is that correct, Jacqueline? Do I have it right this time? <laughs> At the same time, 3 p.m.? Yes. Um, same format um, as is possible given what the legislature decides. Does anybody have a problem with that? Lisa, I remember you had to rearrange your schedule to, to work with our schedule. Is that possible for you? Yes, it's possible. It's no problem. Thanks for asking. Jacqueline, I'm just curious, is there uh, something behind that? Yeah, so as we're looking at the workflow of information getting to the BOT in a timely way, the, 
the the new administrator is trying to come up with a standardized process so that anything that goes to the BOT, likely the deadline will be the previous Thursday at noon. And and on the months, and it is many months that we that our our third Thursday meeting is before the fourth uh, Tuesday, which by BOT meets, that means that our our information could not be taken up in the next BOT meeting, but would have to wait until the following. Now, some of the time that's routine things and that's not a problem, but for anything that actually does require timely BOT action, there's that's going to cause a problem because we won't have met in time to get the materials onto the BOT agenda. So I just okay. think that simple change will will just smooth things over. Yeah. That seems like we should do that then. Yeah. So our next meeting would be February 10th? Uh, potentially. We're going to decide in January if we're going to meet in February. Mm -hmm. right. Do we need some sort of motion on this or do are we just gonna, can we I, just speak to it or what? Perhaps we should formalize it as a motion. Um, Jacqueline, you want to uh, take a crack at a motion here that incorporates these concepts? I would like to move that for the 2022 calendar year, the LPC will meet on the second Thursday of each month starting in February of 2022. I would like to support that motion. Right? All right, we have support from Hob. Sorry, Thursday, the second Thursday at three o'clock. Second that, yes, Jacqueline. I'll second thank that for you. you. Okay, we've got seconds. Okay, that was Jacqueline. Okay. All right, uh, we'd call the vote, uh, Liz. Hob? Yes. Jacqueline? Yes. Marty? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Kim? Yes. Will? Yes. And I am yes. All right. Well, I'm glad we can agree on that. And uh, we'll have uh, Jacqueline, Alec, and I will kind of monitor the situation regarding constraints on face-to-face -face meetings. And, and of course, the epidemic itself may have relented. We'd like to hope that. So the situation may look different in January than it, than it does now. Uh, so thank you for participating in that discussion. Um, that's all we have in old business uh, and new business. Uh, Barry, as open session matters, do you have additional things you can talk to us about? Uh, I mute myself, yes. No, I am unmuted. Good, good. Um, just a couple of quick things. Um, still trying to find the time to work on the Andrews project, but now that Renz is... Uh, pretty much uh, set for the time being. I can focus my, return my attention to that. Uh, still waiting to hear on the Delhi Woods Estates property uh, from Tom Burnham. He's got one last uh, mortgage to be subordinated. Um, and uh, fall monitoring uh, was completed. Um, uh, before uh, firearm season for deer um, kicked in, uh, no issues on any of the properties, all of the uh, letters with the uh, uh, copies of the monitoring reports have been sent out and I know some of them have been returned. Um, and we already talked about the microtech cell uh, presentation to the, the board of trustees. I do want to mention also that uh, uh, I was on a Zoom this morning with uh, uh, Remy Long from the Greenbelt and uh, uh, Legacy Rep and a couple of reps from Washtenaw County Parks. Uh, Remy is also uh, pursuing a, a Biprotect cell strategy for the city. Um, uh, they've been wanting to do that for a while and actually Remy's been interested in that for quite a few years. So he already done a lot of the background work on that. I sent him our documents so he can review them and he sent me his um, and there's some more forthcoming. In fact, we talked about him making a presentation um, to the LPC sometime early next year about what he's uh, proposing for the Greenbelt program and how we might be able to collaborate with them on that. Um, uh, and then the last thing was uh, this coming uh, uh, probably March or so is the first round of the 
uh, the new RCPP, um, the Resource Conservation Partnership Program that, that Remy was uh, uh, responsible for spearheading. Um, you know, we've committed to doing you know a couple of projects and a certain dollar amount, um, and that federal that federal funding for that up to fifty percent of the appraised value is uh, readily available to us um, for any projects that we have. I don't see any immediately that are presenting themselves. Um, and we don't have to nominate something this year. We'll have access to it again in, uh, in 2023. Um, but one of the things that Remy said uh, on, on the, the quarterly um, partners meeting for the, the, uh, the current RCPPs, or the original ones, I should say, maybe, um, is that um, not only do we have seven and a half million dollars of federal funds committed um, between all of us partners here for projects going forward, <clears throat> but um, by virtue of how successful that we've been um, with the, the two previous uh, RCPP awards um, and the way that the program is structured now is that the sooner we run through the seven and a half million dollars of federal funds, um, the better because we are then in a position to seek a renewal um, for the same amount of money going forward. And apparently that can be turned over several times. So we've got a five-year window to close all the deals and, and spend all the federal money. But if we can do that in two years or three years, then we can turn around and, and apply for a renewal and potentially get another seven and a half million dollars um, in, in, uh, in the short term, in you know, a couple, three years time. So um, that's going to be one of the things that I'll be focusing on starting in January is uh, going back to our list of high priority properties and approaching those landowners um, about uh, uh, either submitting an application or you know, hopefully uh, at least considering you know, doing that going forward um, so that we can find more properties that we can you know, utilize those, those dedicated federal funds for and uh, just keep that ball rolling. So again, I, I, I can't say enough about you know, Remy also. He's just been a tremendous asset for all of us here um, in a variety of ways, and in particular, the RCPP. Barry, can I just quickly uh, ask? Can, yeah, go ahead, Jack, I'm sorry. Um, could that program be used for something like the application that has come in for a buy, protect, sell deal that maybe we will be discussing in closed session? The 50 yes. acre property yes absolutely so maybe that would be one that we could think about yes once. yeah that's the one that's, that's out there right now that i think okay. would be suitable for the rcpp and Which, then there was another pro another inquiry from a landowner is yes. it, do you have a sense of which of those properties would be better and again maybe this is but we, we potentially have a couple of properties. We do. And um, I'll go back and, and see what we committed to. Um, I, I think it's more than one project, um, one property. <clears throat> and so potentially we could nominate them both. What was Great. the first one that you mentioned, Jacqueline? The first it, was an, it was an application that had come in from a party that was interested in a buy, protect, sell, deal and so we have been waiting to finalize the buy protect sell policy before we got back to that offer so i think you know by january or february we should be in a strong position to go back to them so we'll maybe pick that up in closed session if uh, that's appropriate yes correct uh anything more barry not for the open session report all right i, okay. I do uh will i uh, in my report, I forgot to mention our next uh, outing. Oh, the LPC and the LPC and the parks, and now TAP has expressed an interest in being another sponsor of our uh, Saturdays at Sio Preserves. I think Jacqueline, is that what we originally called it? I think it's yes. Right? And thank you for carrying on, Hob. I'm sorry I've been out of the loop for sure. a couple months on this. Well, in the next newsletter, uh, the township newsletter, I don't know if it'll come out in time, but our next scheduled um, meeting, normally the first Saturday of each month, but that would be January 1st. Uh, so we're, we submitted January 8th as the no, next they'll, they'll um, there, outing. Yeah. And that will be at Dexter here on Metro Park. And we'll attempt, unless it's really icy, to 
walk a part of the border to border trail, the new section that runs east uh, from from the Dexter Huron Metro Park. Again, that will be in the newsletter uh, and it will be a banner on the website. And again, that would be January 8th, Saturday, January 8th from 10 to 11.30. And we'll meet at the Eastern parking lot. In other words, if you drive into Dexter Huron off of, uh, off of uh, Huron River Drive, uh, you, you just keep going along the river until, well, it sort of, there's a little parking lot there and you see the border to border trail, the bridge that goes over the first section of the river. So that will be January 8th, which is a Saturday, 10 a.m. All right, thank you, Hob. Is there anything else that anybody would like to share or ask about? Yeah. And, and the newsletter will actually give four. So there'll be a January, February 5th, a March 5th and an April 2nd. Uh, to continue the series. And at that point, we're, geez, I, 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 at that point, I think we're up to nine consecutive months of tours of different preserved properties that Sio Township um, has been involved in, and, and most of those with the millage being involved uh, in, ter in terms of preserving those properties, the preserves and parks. I, I know Pam often includes them in her newsletter. Pam, if you're listening now, did you get the information in order to include it. I did. Thank you very much. And I apologize for not putting it in uh, for December. Uh, I <laughs> the the Thanksgiving schedule threw me off, and um, and I missed putting it in uh, the the newsletter before the December uh, 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 park thing. So yes, I've gotten that. Uh, written down and I really appreciate it and I will make sure and put on my calendar for February, March and April. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right, then I think we'll go into closed session unless there's anything more for open session. Do we have a motion? We have a, we need a motion to go into closed session to discuss pending property evaluations. So I'd both. like to make that motion. <laughs> all right, do we have a second? I'll second. Yeah.